two things be should look at today. We should look at graphs. And we should look briefly at continuous exponential problems. Um, graphs, I don't have a whole lot of very exciting stuff to say about, except that we've looked at the graphs of all of the other functions we've investigated so far. So we ought to look at the graphs of continuous functions, of exponential functions too. Let's say f of x equals two, times 1.017 to the power of x. Doesn't, uh, doesn't look like a whole lot so far. If we scroll out, we can get a better idea of what these graphs look like. Exponential growth. So the number is greater than one here. This is one plus point zero seventeen. Um, a relatively slow start, but once exponential growth gets going, as it were, it is extremely quick. So from 365 to 2,220 to 2,760. So exponential growth is best characterized by being extremely fast. I mean, that's obviously not the only property that this graph has but it's probably the most important one. And the details here, as long as whatever I have here is positive, and as long as I have this addition, the details here don't really matter that much. They let me... They change how quickly the graph is growing a bit, but all exponential growth looks basically like this. If I change this addition to subtraction, I get a graph that looks like this. Instead of increasing, the exponential function is decreasing down to zero. If I were to summarize those graphs, y equals a times b to the power of x. The graph looks either like this. If B is greater than one, or it looks like that if B is less than one. So one of these. <laughs> And now I would like to introduce the idea of continuous exponential growth. So this idea comes from the fact
that um, that the same exponential growth can be described in this in in different ways. Let me grab my notes. So, for example, suppose you have a quantity that's increasing by 5% every So every week, this quantity increases by 5%. And suppose you have a quantity that's increasing by 0 0.09387 percent every year. Well, it's certainly not obvious, but these two situations are describing exactly the same thing. Increasing by this month every week is the same as increasing by this month every year. So if we go look at the graph of an exponential function, where the x-axis is time, is um, it's not really clear that either of these is more appropriate than the other, right? Because it's not like this quantity is constant, except that it's increasing every week. And it's not that this quantity is constant, except that it's increasing every year. This quantity, I mean, it's always going up. It doesn't just go up every week or up every year, it's constantly. The mathematical word for this is continuously going up. So we want to be able to take a statement like this. and make a statement about not what happens every week or what happens every day or even what happens every minute or every second. We want to express the idea that this quantity is growing continuously. If you see the phrase continuous Growth. What am I writing? Continuous growth. We write the exponential function differently. And this is not a theoretical class. I'm not going to get into the details of where this equation comes from. But if you see the phrase continuous growth, then your exponential function gets written differently. 
instead of having some B here, we have an E. And this E is a constant. It's like pi. So this E is not changing. And we still have our T up in the exponent. But we also have this R. And this R is the growth rate. And without going into the details of where this equation is coming from, it admittedly looks a little artificial, but it's just kind of a pattern recognition, I guess. Let's look at an example. Example. A quantity is increasing at a rate of 2% every year. And just for simplicity, Let's give this quantity some kind of initial value. We do not see the word continuous here. So we're just using the formula that we learned last week. The initial value times one plus the growth rate raised to the power of T. If I now throw in the word continuous, suddenly our exponential function looks different. We still have this initial value, but when we're given a continuous growth rate, that number E goes in the base. And the growth rate, which is still 2%.02, goes into the exponent. So all of this really means is that um is that you need to look for that word continuous. And um, if the word continuous is there, you're using that formula. And if the word continuous is not there, you're using that formula. So it's basically pattern recognition. You look for that word, and if you see it, or if you don't see it, you use one of these formulas. Now, I've said this E is a constant. This E is in your calculator. So let's make sure we all know how to evaluate expressions that look like this in our calculator. Let's say that A 
bacteria population is growing at a continuous hourly rate of two percent if the colony currently covers three square inches, how big will the colony be after one day? So we see that this is a continuous growth rate, meaning that we're looking for an exponential function that looks like that. Um, we do a little thug and say, so our initial value is three. Our growth rate is point zero two. And we want to know what happens after 24 hours. So T equals 24. Let's go to the calculator. Any day now. There we go. So three times E, and I want to make sure we all know where E is. Three times. So you see in the blue over this LN button, E to the power of X. If we press the second button and then the LN button, we get taken into the power. So 0 0.02 times 24. After 24 hours, this colony will cover about 4.848 square inches. Okay, and I don't think, I don't think there's any way to present this material that isn't at least a little artificial. I mean, um, the reason that continuous growth is really important shows up in calculus, where presumably not planning to take calculus in this room. So you'll never really see the, the true importance of what that letter E represents, 
why we should care about this. At the same time, this E does show up in a lot of business applications. We can't just ignore it. So we're left with this admittedly somewhat unsatisfactory solution where we just present this idea and don't talk a lot about where it comes from or what it's good for. But it's, as I say, just pattern recognition. You look for that word continuous. It's either there or it isn't. And the form the you use depends on whether the word is present or absent. 